super excited to be here with Alex Howard. And so the way that we met, Alex, is we were both um, inducted into this uh, men's WhatsApp group, which uh, is for like business owners at a particular level. And um, I've learned a lot from being in that group just because we talk at a high level in terms of business strategy and marketing. And uh, it's, you know, some of the smartest, smartest people that I know are in this group. And you're one of the folks who over the really, I think that's over a year that we've been in the group together where you've just occasionally dropped some insights and wisdom and experiences from your from your business journey. And you've built up a, a, a business that's bigger than mine. And um, what's more, what's most impressive to me is like, it's it's a therapy business. It's 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 psychotherapy. It's also um, I'll let you say more about it, but basically personal development business, which I know a lot of people watching my channel would love to also grow their personal development or spiritual mentoring or yeah transformational type business. And you've been able to do that. You know not only services but also group programs, courses, etc. And so after all this experience, you are now finally putting together all that hard-won knowledge into a program called the Authentic Marketing Program. So we're going to be talking about that for sure. But Alex, anything else you want to say about your background before we get started? Well, maybe the thing, George, that I'll say is this was all an accident. Right? So, <laughs> so my, you know, I had a, I had a sort of um, uh, my own uh, kind of health journey as a teenager. And when I, rec I had a complex chronic illness called ME or chronic fatigue syndrome, I recovered from that. And my, my mission was the way, the, in a way, the way I, I wanted to make meaning out of the seven years that I'd, uh, I'd kind of lost, but I'd also gained a lot was I wanted to set up the organization that I'd wanted to exist in, in, in those years. And I, so I, I trained as a clinician. Um, I trained in various forms of psychology and, and, and so on. And then I set, set up a clinic and I had no patients. Um, and then I had a book that came out that really chronicled my recovery story and no one bought the book. And so I found myself on a point where I was, I was really high on, on passion and on energy for what I wanted to do. I had time, but I didn't have strategy. I didn't know how to talk about what I was doing. I didn't know how to get clients, how to get customers. And so over those kind of early years, I used to describe myself as a, a therapist by day and an entrepreneur by night, <laughs> that it was like my my day-to-day -day love was doing clinical work and in time doing group programs and over more late, you know, later years, you know, very successful online conferences and so on. But really, I, I, I realized that if I wanted to be successful building the, the business that I wanted to build and to do it in a way which I felt was authentic and was aligned to my missions and my values, I had to learn how to do that. Otherwise I was gonna to have to outsource, I, tr I tried that. I tried hiring other people to do that and it just never worked. And so it was, it was an accident, but over the years, my first love always has been and always will be psychology and working with people. But I've also come to love the business side because that's what's enabled me to take the work that I love to millions of people as opposed to you know a few dozen people yeah that's amazing i love that story and so give us a sense of that like what what has your business grown out to these days uh, tell us about that you know um what what kind of work are you doing with clients yeah. and uh, how many clients are you seeing or how does the group programs work and yeah yeah, so I'm 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 British. We we don't we don't like to show off about things, but, but <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm, that's you, why you've I'm asked me the question. So answer I'll, I'll the question. <laughs> so so well, so the Optimum Health Clinic, which has been going now for twenty years, um, we've had over ten thousand patients um, that you know registered patients in our system over those twenty years. We have a team of about twenty five full time practitioners. We have patients in over fifty countries around the world at any point. Um, we have a professional training program, which is therapeutic coaching, which is a trademarked um, methodology, which integrates really psychotherapeutic approaches with a solution-based coaching methodology. And I think we currently have across the three different levels of training, about three or 400 active students in, um, in that professional training. Um, and then our um, online conference business, where we've produced conferences on uh, trauma, anxiety, sleep, fatigue, 
We've had over one and a half million attendees in those conferences in the last four years. Um, and then I have a very successful 12 week online coaching program called the reset program, which is, I think the best program, I, mean, I guess I'm biased, but the best program really in the world around learning how to reset your nervous system. And that's grossed over $3 million over the last few years. Um, my thing has always been that if you create the best products, the marketing is easier. If you have crappy products, you've got to overinflate your marketing to get anywhere. And so, you know, my motivation has never primarily been financial, but what I have realized is to do things at, at scale and to do things really well, you've got to have the best products, but you've also got to be able to build infrastructure and to be able to build, you know, we have everything in-house these days. We have in-house marketing, production, web development. And so it's meant that we've been able to really protect the quality and the integrity of not just the content, but also the systems and process behind it. That's amazing. Wow. That's so inspiring. What would you've been able to accomplish and, um, and in, in the field of real like, transformation rather than like, for me, it's like, Oh, business and marketing. It's uh, it's, you know, so like you're a, you know, really um, a case study for what authentic marketing can do. And that's wonderful. So let's get into it. Let's talk about this. I, I know a lot of people watching this. I mean, there's, there's, there's a variety of business levels, uh, people who watch this. There are people, a lot of people, of course, in any field, like beginnings, just starting out like, oh, Alex, I'd, I'd love to have that kind of business one day, perhaps, but I'm just right now getting my first, you know, 20, 50 clients, et cetera. Sure. Um, and, and, you know, curious what, what you might want to say to them. And then all the way to people who are um, right now, they're, they're maybe stable in their business, but they are uh, stable in terms of seeing a lot of one-to-one -one clients. And they like, they like to expand beyond that to, to, you know, group programs that are fully booked. And then, you know, beyond that, maybe they sell some courses every now and then, but they like to really expand to the point where, of course, you have a team and you're not the one, <laughs> I mean, it's been a long time since you've been the ones, you know, seeing most of the clients or students who come into your business. So, so let's begin with, with, I guess that makes sense for the, for the journey. Let's begin with the beginner. And um, what, what advice would you give them, particularly from an authentic marketing point of view? So the thing that we say, so I do a, a masterclass for our practitioner training at the end. And the, the thing that I always say to, to those folks, so newly qualified therapeutic coaches yes. is number one, be great at what you do. Going back to what we said a few minutes ago, if you're not great at what you do, but we, we don't certify people that are not great. So we, we know that they've reached that point, but like own the fact that you have, you have skills and you have competence in what you do. And the way to really become the very best practitioner you can be is you've got to do your 10,000 hours, like everything else in, in life, right? To get to true levels of mastery, you do 10,000 hours of whatever that thing may be. The difficult thing is, is to get the 10,000 hours, you've got to get the clients, right? So you can be great at what you do, but to become the greatest at what you do, you've still got to figure out how to get those clients. So there's lots of different ways to do it. We can talk about some of those, but you've got to find a way to communicate what you do to other people. I remember when I launched my first website, waiting for the inquiries to come right back in like 2002 it must have been so you know 22 years ago putting up a website i think that's that's enough but of course having a website back in those days we used to make sort of like you know printed flyers like an, a, an a4 flyer and you'd fold it a couple of times make a kind of leaflet and if you were really flashy you print it in color rather than print it in black and white um you know having a bit back in the days of business cards but all those things most people make flyers make business class and just have a big pile on the shelf at home so it's still the same principle you've got to get those in front of other people to put it in marketing terms you've got to have a strategy for acquiring leads there are free strategies there are paid strategies there are strategies that involve you having to do things like social media but there's also strategies that don't involve you having to do that one of our most successful graduates primarily built her practice by building a relationship with the local doctor surgery went in there and spoke to them a few times she was just she was just a patient at the surgery which was like one day having an appointment saying can i talk to you about what i've been training and doing built a relationship 
And they sent her one or two people, like, well, let's see what happened. She did really good work with those people. So then she just kind of became the go-to person that if someone had, you know, anxiety, sleep issues, whatever it may be, they go, well, we can give you some drugs for that, but you should go and see this person. So one relationship became the source of pretty much building an entire practice. So I think sometimes people, when they're starting out, they see people on social media that have got tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands or millions of followers. And they think, well, you know, I, I don't like filming myself. I'm not, I'm not good at social media. I know people that have over 100,000 followers on a social media channel, and by the way, they're not getting any clients from it. So it's not about numbers or vanity metrics. It's about how do you find the ways to communicate you? Maybe you're better at writing, so you should do Substack or media. Maybe you're better at interviewing and you should do a podcast. Maybe you're, you're good on camera, so you should do short form video like TikTok or Instagram Reels or whatever. So there's not a rule book of the thing that everyone should do. The whole thing for me of being authentic is if you feel like you're doing something that's not aligned with your values or who you are, even if you manage to make yourself do it, you're not going to feel good doing it and it's unlikely to be successful. But it's finding a way to take your voice and what you have to offer and then finding the vehicle that's going to allow you to communicate that, to put that in front of other people. But the thing that, that particularly the thing that I found which can get in the way of that is we know we know the things we should start with doing, but it's having the accountability, it's having the discipline, it's having the consistency in actually doing those things. It's the same, so I say to our graduates, it's the same issue that you're working with your clients. Your client knows they need to do this and do that, and your job as a practitioner is to get them to do it. It's the same job you with yourself to get yourself to do those daily things that are going to move forward the marketing of your business. Oh yeah, this is so good. I I I love that you know kind of analogy that you're you're giving us, and it's like okay, yeah. And I sometimes say, you know, your most important client is you. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and maybe your most difficult client is you. Your most well. yeah, that's that's exactly right. Your most stubborn <laughs> and and uh, okay. So so. I love that also you said that there are, you know, do a dozen, maybe more like really effective ways to get your message out there, get your website out there, whatever social media presence or or, or just get your uh, presence out there. Um, and you have to, I, I tell people, you got to like experiment with different ways because how do you, you know, how do you know unless you actually tried it yourself and have that embodied experience of, oh, this is what it's like to do this. And how do people uh, see me doing this? And do they do they enjoy it? Is there good results, et cetera? And that that ex that that story about your client who kind of built a bunch of new clients by by having one really solid relationship, I've found that to be true sometimes too. Like in the course of my my years, it's like sometimes you chance upon one connection that really. Um, I mean, one of our mutual connections, Mark Walsh, uh, really was, I mean, after I met him and, you know, we'd worked together and he's really supported me in my business. I supported him. It's like, it's like, wow. It's like, I meet a lot of people, but it's like sometimes. And so I, I, I sometimes I call that uh, net caring uh, instead of networking. It's like you, 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 you connect and you keep in touch with people that you genuinely like, that you genuinely enjoy. And you come from that angle like oh i really i just like you and I, and 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 there's probably some mutual benefit for our support of uh, our um our businesses together but so i i love that and um you speak from such a grounded place about this because you certify a bunch of practitioners who now of course need to go out and build a business so i'm sure you're like you know coaching and training them all the time about this and of course that's what the authentic marketing program you're kind of putting that all that together into one program that um it's not just for your graduates but for I guess anybody watching this, right, can can sign up for that. Um, we'll talk about that in just a bit, but I, I wanted to also see if you had any advice for the person who, all right, now they have done the the things to get um, uh, that you know a lot of people they get some clients and then thankfully word of mouth gets them more clients, but then at some point, word of mouth, as always, is not often a sustainable process. Because everyone they know have has already known what they do, and everyone perhaps even at the second degree, those who are likely to sign up uh, have already signed up. So once sometimes word of mouth starts to peter out, 
or on the other hand, they want to expand now to group programs and courses and things like, like what you do. So what guidance or what advice or tips might you have or perspective for, for those people? Yeah, so my big lesson from the trenches <laughs> yes. doing this and having witnessed a lot of people try to do this over the years as well, that I think there's a path that can really work. And I think there's a path that can work, but it's a really hard one. The really hard path is going from being one practitioner to thinking, well, I've got a bit more clients and I want to, I have time to see by myself. So I'm going to hire a few more practitioners. That's a really difficult path to make work. Like the economies of scale on, on taking revenue, cut a cut of revenue on other practitioners you our learning is you need to be at the sort of scale that we are where we've got a few dozen practitioners because what happens otherwise is you get two or three practitioners and then you're spending a lot of your time training supporting recruiting those people you're losing time on your own clinical work but the cut that you're taking on those people doesn't necessarily return what you're losing on your own clinical work so then you think, okay well i'm going to hire some people to build some infrastructure and now the infrastructure is costing more than what they're giving you and what you're giving you. So that I've seen a lot of people try to make that transition and it's it's a difficult one. And, and I should say, you know, my, my thing is because my, my job is not as a marketing trainer, I, I, I just can just share what, what's worked from my experience, right? It's like, you know, your benefit is, one of your benefits, you've got lots of them. One of them is that you get to see this across multiple industries. You get to see this in lots of different contexts and environments. And this may be different, in, in, but particularly in the therapy business, in the sort of functional medicine business, in the sort of osteopathy, chiropractic, like these kind of clinical service type businesses, it's like, I would say, if unless you really want to build the empire, in which case then go for it, build all that infrastructure and do all those things. But a much smarter move is to go, well, I've got more people than I can work with one-to-one -one by myself. So I'm going to start running some group programs. I'm going to go from one-to-one -to, -one to one to a group. And maybe you're going to do that a while to refine and to test the material. And then you go, I'm going to go to online programs and courses. So we will we will generate more revenue in one intake of the reset program than I can earn clinically in an entire year myself as 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 a practitioner, right? And so it's but what I would also say is that another mistake I think people make is that they go, right, okay, the money's in group programs and online courses, and they go straight to doing that, but they haven't really refined their voice. They haven't really found like their, what content really works for them, right? So I, I did a I did a keynote in um, in Belfast yesterday at a, at, a, at, a, at a very large trauma conference, and it was on the main stage with a thousand people in the room, two thousand more people, I think it was online. And I walk onto that stage knowing pretty much how every line is going to land in that room because I've delivered that content so many times over the years to so many different groups and environments. But it, it's, although there's still a, holy cow, there's like a thousand people in front of me right now. There's like, I know the content and I see people try to create online programs. And it's a little bit like a, um, a comedian doesn't start by trying to sell arenas. A comedian starts in comedy clubs and even major comedians, when, they, when they're writing new content, they don't test it in front of 10,000 people. They go back to the comedy club and sometimes they literally stand there with a pen and paper, tell jokes and score the reaction yeah. from the audience. I, I, I literally had that experience with Robin Williams. Oh, wow. I, I actually wow. attended story. and it was, we got free tickets and it was raw. I was shocked at how not funny Robin Williams was most <laughs> of the session. I was like, what are you talking about? This was my, some of my favorite movies, but just like you're saying, this is so true. Like the, your your emphasis on the necessity to practice and notice the reactions and continue honing your message. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, no, no, I, 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 it's, a, it's a great, it's a great um, application yeah. of the point, right? And it's like, so to me, the honing in the material is partly the one-on-one -on -one work. Like you work with people and you figure out what actually works and you have to teach the same technique a hundred times and you've refined it a little bit each time by the way that it's responded to. So. For some people, the reason why they fail launching online courses is 
they just haven't got product market fit. Like they're not offering a course that's really solving a big enough pain point that people want to spend a hundred, two hundred, five hundred thousand dollars on 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 the program. But if you really hone that skill in one-on-one -on -one sessions and small groups or whatever, you really find out what people, not what your friends say sounds great, but what people actually vote with their own money to, to, to invest and into purchase. So to me, there's a real sequence to these things. And I see people spend money they don't have building websites, filming content, making courses, putting it out there and then being really disappointed that it doesn't, it doesn't succeed. Maybe what would be better would be to start with putting out a bunch of content from that on somewhere like TikTok, where you've got a good chance of content getting surfaced, even if you haven't already got lots of followers, and see what people engage with. So literally this afternoon, we were just recording a couple of videos for my YouTube channel, and we went through my TikTok and picked the two best performing videos and said, well, let's do an eight-minute version of the one-minute version from TikTok. So, so my point here is that sometimes the issue is that we the content needs refining and we're trying to skip stages in in the, in the development but other times the issue is we are avoiding doing things that are we, we're not familiar with doing or things that might feel uncomfortable like going and having that meeting with a doctor's surgery like putting ourselves on camera for the first time so just like what I found over the years, working with people with complex chronic illnesses or complex uh, mental health issues sometimes, is you can't solve the problem till you diagnose the problem. Because if you have the diagnosis wrong, the intervention is likely wrong. So when it yeah. comes to building a successful practice, building a successful online business, we've got to have frameworks, we've got to have maps, we've got to have clarity of what's going on, but then we've got to have accountability and get people to actually do the day-to-day -day things that are actually then going to move things forwards. That's amazing. I, 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 I so appreciate that your advice is coming from the, the grounded experience of having worked with so many practitioners and, and colleagues and kind of seeing your friends and, and what's working and what's not. So, okay, we only have a few minutes left and I want to make sure um, I, I'm, I'm, I want some of the, I have some questions about the, the, your authentic marketing program that I, I think uh, would be helpful. So one is, what types of people, what type or types of people would be best suited to sign up for this program? I mean, just having access to you as someone with a vast amount of business and marketing experience in the therapeutic field, and also your insights about human psychology and, and sort of like the, the process of human development is really valuable having that integration. So what kind of, what kind of people, person would be best for the program? Yeah, so... The program is specifically designed for people that have businesses in the, the broader definition of sectors that, that I'm in. So health, self-development, right. meditation teachers, breathwork teachers, yoga teachers, chiropractors, osteopaths. If you're, um, you know, if you're a, a plumber or you run a jet washing business or whatever, like a lot of the stuff may translate, but it's not the place from which I'm going to be teaching it. It's probably not the best fit. But people that work in in those wider areas, yeah, we that's my my audience. So <laughs> right, <laughs> okay, cool. okay, good. Okay. Now, now let me ask you this: <laughs> at, at what point do you think they're uh, ready and uh, to make the best use of of your yeah. program? What might you yeah. Say? So I gave that a lot of thought. We actually just ran a beta test for um, over the last six months for a group of twenty of, of our own graduates, and some of the feedback was we needed to pitch the program to meet people at different levels. So we actually have three levels in the program. The first level we call learning, which is people where they are effectively still in their training process as a practitioner. They want to have the understanding, the awareness, but they're not yet ready to do stuff with it. The second stage is people that are implementing. They already have a website or they're building a website. Maybe they're starting to put together an email newsletter. Like they're doing this, but they want to go the next level. Then we have a third stage called accelerating, which is people that already have a business. They already have income. They have clients, but they want to go that next level. Right. And maybe that's the people that have an in-person practice or an online practice. They want to do coaching programs or they want to get to launch a practitioner training. So it's people that want to, to take something and take it the next level. And so we have we have an offering for each of those three different stages. That's really great, actually. So, um, folks, I will be sure to put the links below to Alex's content, as well as this authentic marketing program. I'm excited to take a look at this myself and 
and I'll say this, um, what the link I'll put below is a unique affiliate link to out to, to the program. And those who sign up for using my affiliate link, I'm going to get a bonus. I'm going to give a bonus for uh, two integration sessions for those who sign up um, group sessions. So uh, you'll take the program, you'll take Alex's program. And then afterwards um, I will meet with you all as a group and, you know, probably not going to be a giant group, but you know, it's going to be enough time for us to do Q and a and, help you troubleshoot and 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 really integrate this and implement this into your own business. So I'm really looking forward to that. I will announce what the dates are once the, the launch of the authentic marketing program ends and we can figure out the dates for that. So check out the links below and Alex, so great to talk with you and thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, George. And just to add, the, the link you'll give people is gonna allow them to sign up for a one hour webinar. So a lot of what we touched on here gets unpacked in a lot more detail. So it's people are signing up for more information and then they can make a really informed choice about the paid program if they want to come through. And those those additional pieces you're offering sound really cool as well. Yeah, awesome, awesome. All right, folks, check out the links below and enjoy Alex's content and program perhaps. Thanks.